Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. Tonight, we have four very special guests. We are joined by Brian Darcy James, Destry Allen Spielberg, Oliver Brooks, and Jelana Lobel from the short film Let Me Go the Right Way, which is premiering on the Alter Channel March 7th. For those of you that don't know, you can watch the Alter Channel on the Roku Channel, Redbox, as well as on their YouTube channel. Guys, thank you so much for coming on here and talking about this short film. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it left me wanting more. I wanted to find out more about this story. And Brian, I want to start with you. You play the psychiatrist, Dr. Kemp. When we first meet Dr. Kemp, he comes across as sort of this know-it-all, snobby, rich doctor psychiatrist. What were your thoughts on how you, you were going to approach Dr. Kemp? Well, first of all, the, the script was so interesting and the character was so rich and, and you know, not to spoil it, and we'll, we'll probably get there ultimately, but the character does reveal himself to be something that he's not. Mm -hmm. And that's always really interesting to play. But I felt imp most importantly for the uh, the beginning of the, the relationship that I start with Hopper's character, um, when he comes in to see me as a patient in a psychiatrist's mm -hmm. office, I, I, I really felt it was important to hopefully portray a person that was genuinely and sincerely caring for this person to basically entrap them, uh, yeah. you know, whether unwillingly or unwittingly rather. So uh, just to give him a sense of uh, a, a real professional sheen of, of, you know, he knew how to do his job. He was, he was uh, hopefully inviting and made it, you know, uh, a, a place where, where he wanted to come and participate in this this you know doctor patient relationship and then of course you know the the script is so great because peppered throughout it there's all kinds of things that he says that just kind of tip his hand a little bit and you don't mm -hmm. know if it's just his way of speaking or if he's just kind of a little odd or just doesn't have the greatest sense of humor but that's as i said um it's revealed later where where, where it's all going and it surprised me i'll tell you that much now destry you and Owen King uh, came up with this story. How did this concept arise? Yeah. Um, well, we came up with it in the midst of the pandemic. And it was kind of towards the end of 2020. I believe it was December. Um, I was looking to make a short film. And my manager also repped him and wanted to kind of introduce us. And at the time, my partner at the time had gotten COVID but was experiencing long COVID and it was you know anxiety uh hypochondria just things that uh they never had before and I sort of <laughs> had the idea from having to be you know around it and trying to help help them um and I thought well what if I made a story about a young man who has hypochondria mm -hmm. and goes to see a psychiatrist who in the original, my sort of my idea, didn't believe him. And then at the end he just dies because yeah. he actually has all these crazy problems. Um, but you know, when Owen and I started talking, we just, we started spitballing other ideas and um, kind of came to the conclusion of Dr. Kemp and- uh, Aiden. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> been so long Aiden. and uh Aiden, yeah. thank you yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry i'm i'm in the middle of two movies right now no, so my brain i totally like, get it his names um uh and yeah it just truly like bloomed and it was awesome and owen king by the way is such a great writer i mean what an imagination he has yeah i think uh, he has awesome. some uh some good bloodlines on that one um, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep now, uh, Delana, you produced quite a few short films in your career. How did you get involved with this project? Well, um, yeah, Oliver and I have been working with Gobi One Motion Pictures for five years producing short films. But I also work as a line producer and production manager. And one of our co-producers, Michael Pitt, who's good friends with Josh Kesselman, another of our producers, uh, called me up and brought me the project and said, hey, 
I don't produce short films, but I heard that you do. Uh, would you be interested in this project? And Oliver and I gave it a read and immediately were intrigued by Destry and Owen's vision for this, this film, for this script. Uh, and we got to meet Destry and Owen and really get into the characters and talk about what Destry envisioned for how to bring the story to life. And we got really excited by mm -hmm. the challenge that it presented us to tell this really rich visual story um, that also had this incredible twist, and which was does. not um, a kind of project that we had done before. Yeah, this definitely has a great twist to it. <clears throat> Oliver, what was it about the story in particular that really intrigued you? Um, you know, just reading it the first time, you could really just see it. And like, there was a lot, there was some stuff that we cut out initially, but it was, it was just so rich in the world that they had created on, you know, in a few number of pages was, was really incredible. Um, you know, Galana mentioned like she and I have both been doing, uh, huge projects in New York for many, many years. And like, as soon as I read it, I was like, oh, we can do it here and we can do it here. And like, just had all these ideas like jumping off right away. So we, we dove right in and, um, you know, made something that we're really proud of. Uh, Brian, you and Hopper really play well off each other on the screen. What does Dr. Kemp uh, see in Aiden that fascinates him? Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, thank you for saying that. I, I felt the same way. It was it was a real pleasure working with Hopper and um, kind of having this this, you know, really intense, you know, moment of 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 time to kind of make this short film together. Um, but in terms of the character, I think I think again, it's it's a um, I I don't know how much we we should reveal, but uh, but you know, Galana said it best. There's a big twist at the end, but I think this it suffice to say that I think he's curious about how how willing Hopper's character Aiden is 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 willing to go into the the kind of the lair of this guy yeah. into kind of his snatches and kind of to trust him and how far he can take it and how far he can enlist his trust. So, you know, that, that kind of um, father son relationship that kind of that starts to develop a little bit near the end uh, before everything goes haywire. Um, I just think he's fascinated by just how far he can get Aiden to, to trust him. And I think that the, the further he goes, the better for Dr. Kemp. Sort of like a little bit of a Hannibal Lecter to see how far he can manipulate his patients to do his exactly bidding. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now Destry, uh, what was it in Brian and Hopper that you saw that really told you this is going to be Dr. Kemp and Aiden? Well... <clears throat> You know, Hopper is somebody who we kind of all we kind of all came together all at once. So Hopper was in the mix from the writing stages, um, and you know he has such a he's such an an amazing actor, by the way, and so raw and real, and just has such a innocent sort of. There's some. It truly he has something about him on camera. I can't even explain. I, I'm real. I can't give you like exact yeah. words on on why I think he was, you know, perfect for the part. But to be honest, he just was him. And he and, was perfect. Yeah, he really was. And he, and, you know, and, and and he came and and that first shot, one of the first shots thing we did with him was with him sitting in the chair. And I remember looking at the screen, I was like, this is like, this is per like, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Like he just, the only time I was like, just sit down and comfortable. And he just did it. And he was like a little grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> and it just worked um and then brian you know we we had met working on west side story um you know for a brief second uh and um and you know we were kind of going through the list of people that we wanted to re uh, reach out to and the second i met him it just it, it just all clicked it made sense i mean it's kind of like it's like when you know you know yeah um, and that's kind of the beauty of casting it's it's not it's not always about, you know, performance and, and, and looks. It's really just kind of meeting the person and, and kind of getting to know them and feeling like, yep, yeah, th this, this will work. And Brian, I, I mean, I got to really tip my hat to you. You were so amazing as Dr. Kemp, uh, a fatherly figure, yet terrifying, loving, smart ass. At, at at times you really blended that all well in a 15 minute short film 
Now, uh, you know, Gilana, what do you think is makes the horror genre so great for the short film uh, way of telling a story? Oh, that is a very interesting question for me, someone who does not love the horror genre. <laughs> um, but uh, for me, it's about building the tension and the fear, right? It's those those little moments that build upon each other that really um, can heighten the emotion. And so that when there is a, a twist or when there is that monster jumping out of the closet, that's where your heart jumps out of your chest, right? So it's for me in this, in, from script to screen, finding those moments all, all along the way of telling the story that build that tension that bring you to that moment of fear. Yeah. And I think this script, from the moment we read it, we felt that, and then we got Brian and Hopper and the way that it builds in that room um, in this very small, tight space for this period of time, um, that it, for me, that's how it, we built that I completely um, agree. That fear, that I completely horror. agree. Uh, Oliver, for me, this, you know, like we talked about a little bit before we started the show, it left me uh, wanting to see more. This has all the elements of becoming a feature film. What are your thoughts on that? Um, we have had discussions about it. We talked about that even before we started making it. Um, we are working on something, but uh, we're not ready to share that just yet. Okay, that is perfectly fair. I hope it happens because there is so much that I would like to know. Uh, Brian, you have worked on so many well-known films, television shows. You have done some amazing work. I believe this is your second short, at least according to IMDb. Uh, were you just just so enthralled by this story that you absolutely had to do it? Yeah, it was. It's such it's such a great script, and it's so weird and wonderful. I was I I, I just love the authenticity of of the voice and the storytelling, and of course that is compounded by what Destry was able to do just with the touches of humor and just the way that she kind of traversed the script and, and gave it a visual uh, stamp of her own style, but just going so many different places. It, it really packs so much into a little, a little amount of time uh, stylistically in the production value um, in the characters. So, uh, you know, that, that all seemed to be kind of right there when you're, when you're reading it, which is not usually the case, you know, yeah. it, it, sometimes you find one thing to say, okay, well, this will work. Well, this would be enticing, but this seemed to be all pretty robust with so many different things that are going to make potentially and ultimately did make it really successful. Absolutely. Uh, Oliver, would you say the entire, all the producers as well as the director writers and the cast was this a collaborative effort when it comes to the creative process of this story? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, any any project has that, but like this, especially the people we were able to get involved in this, like all just really contributed amazing things. Um, our our DP was incredible. Our production designer was incredible. I mean, each each cast member added a lot of amazing things. Like, you know, you read something on a page and it's great, you can visualize it, but once you get everybody in the room and every it starts showing up on screen, like. It's it's an amazing feeling. I mean, that's I think one of the big reasons why we all do this, and that's one of the things that was so special about this movie in particular. That's when the magic happens. Destry, you've acted, produced, directed. Uh, as your career progresses, do you want to continue to pursue everything, all three, or does your passion lay in one particular area? Um, that's a great question. I, you know, it's funny. I thought about this. I I love acting. Um, but I think it really like my, my passion really lays in directing and producing and they kind of come hand in hand. And even if I don't even think I'm going to be producing, I end up kind of getting myself involved <laughs> with producing it. Um, but you know, I kind of made a little bit of a slight promise to myself that I'm going to kill myself off in every movie I make some way <laughs> or somehow just for fun. <laughs> um, or put, get myself like a little silly cameo. Um, so yeah, so in terms of acting, I think I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll stick to my, to, to what I'm directing, um, and just have fun yeah, with it. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense, Brian. Uh, I want to leave the last question up to you. This is very worthy of mentioning. Okay, the story was written and directed 
by Steven Spielberg's daughter and Stephen King's son. You played opposite of Sean Penn's son. Um, there's a great generational bloodline to this project. Just what were your thoughts on that and the people that were involved in this project? Well, I think the first thing I have to say is that I am Tom and Mary James's son, which I think <laughs> should, should be stated up front. Um, uh, um, look, it, it's it's it was exciting to know that uh, I was meeting um, artists that I'd never met before, and um, it was it was you know evident from the very beginning that that everybody that was there was was there because they wanted to be there and mm -hmm. were excited to make something unique and cool and and different and um it was um i was really i was really excited by the whole the whole prospect of it all absolutely and like i said you guys really did bring magic to the screen congratulations to all of you i love this short film it left me wanting more Oliver, I hope that feature film does work out and happen. I think it would be a great hit. I want to thank our guests, Destry Allen Spielberg, Brian Darcy James, Oliver Brooks, and Jelana Lobel. The short film is called Let Me Go the Right Way in parentheses, and you'll find out why when you watch the film. It is premiering March 7th on the Ultra Channel. Again, the Ultra Channel, you can catch it on the Roku Channel, on Redbox, and as well as their YouTube channel. Guys, thank you so much. On behalf of my guests and myself, mm -hmm. stay safe. Thank you to our audience and stay walking. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks thank so much. You.